Jason 75 heating up the grill, getting ready to show you some summer grilling tips. Welcome back to Station 75. We've taken our party outside. We're going to be lighting these puppies up on the grill in just a minute, but I've got to introduce you to my friends here at Station 75. Y'all know Captain Tim. Come on. You remember our episode? We had so much fun. All right, and new to the party. Oh, I guess. <laughs> Boris. Now, they actually cook on the Rafter 7 cook-off team. You guys know a lot about all these cuts of meat and ex exactly what to do with them and how to do it safely. So let's start with this spread in front of us. We have some jalapeno poppers wrapped in bacon oh, and wow. dusted with uh, this seasoning right here. This is La Boucherie's house seasoning. Uh, they make it at the butcher shop. Uh, we have a pork lollipop, which is a, uh, it's a pork chop wrapped in bacon. And then we have a French cut filet. And then we also have a pork steak. All right, and what do we have here? We'll start right to left, right? So this is my personal favorite. This is a ribeye. Okay. And I love it because it's easy to cook, high in marbling, which is good in flavor. You've got your all-time favorite, right? The, the filet. Yeah. This is a tomahawk steak, which essentially is the ribeye's big brother with the rib bone still attached, oh, okay. right? And here we have a strip steak, yep. and this is plank steak. Okay. And last but not least, we have the porterhouse, also known as the T-bone. So here you have a strip steak with the filet attached. Okay. This is our scratch kitchen. We make everything from scratch, from all our stuffings that go into our products. So all our beef is prime. We have filets, ribeyes, uh, bone-in ribeyes, for those who like that bone, New York strips, sirloins. We sell the sirloin flat meat for our fajitas. It's one of a kind. You really can't get it anywhere else. Y'all come to La Boucherie. It is conveniently located right here off of Kirkendall between Luetta and Spring Cypress. You can't miss it. Huge facility and literally anything and everything you can think of. Hot Eats will be back in one minute. If you have the desire to serve, the courage to act, and the ability to perform, the Spring Fire Department wants you to volunteer with us. Our volunteers are the heart of what we do. The time demands are substantial, but so are the benefits, including training towards firefighter certifications, financial incentives, insurance, and retirement. Learn how to volunteer with us at springfd.org slash volunteer. Everybody loves to grill, everybody loves to cook out. Uh, we got to make sure that we do it safely. Uh, make sure you hydrate. It's hot. Excessive alcohol in grilling doesn't mix. Uh, that's a good way to get hurt. Don't grill on a balcony or in your garage. You know, just some of those kind of common sense things. It's called open flame for a reason. Yeah. The flame needs to be outside and away from things. Yeah. Uh, and the big thing on not grilling in your garage or on your balcony is especially if you're using a wood-fired or a charcoal grill. Don't do that on your balcony because you will light your apartment building on fire. And if you use charcoal grill or a barbecue pit in your garage, you run the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning uh, and lighting your garage on fire. All right, well, let's get these bad boys on the grill. What are we starting with seasoning wise? All right, so we're going to season our pork first, not the, not the lollipop. So big thing about pork is pork's like sweet. So anything with uh, kind of a citrus or like a brown sugar rub, you're good. So today we're going to be using Fiesta brand extra fancy mango habanero rub. And I think the biggest thing on, on grilling anything, season it how you like it. Meaning like you like a lot of, a lot of flavor? If you like a lot of flavor, you like a little flavor, you don't like sweet, don't use sweet. Huh. Use pepper. Figure out what you like and go with it. There is no one way to do this. So what we want to do is we want to just get a nice even dusting on here. And then of course this guy's pretty thick, so we're going to take the sides. Just don't want to waste anything. Yeah, you kind of massage it in there. You massage it in there. They say rub, but you're not going to rub it. Just give it a nice pat. All right, and then what are you going to do with our, our cuts of beef? So here, you can do a bunch of things today, obviously, just for time saving. We're using Uncle Chris's gourmet seasoning. It's pretty much just salt, pepper, and some other stuff sprinkled in there. If you don't have this, you can make your own. So it's equal parts garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Nice. Right. So okay. just mix it in a bowl. Go ahead and just throw it on there. Uh, for the flank steak, I'm actually a huge fan of this mango having your okay. This stuff will change your life. <laughs> it is good. It is a staple here. All right, and then what's the plan of attack? I mean, are y'all going to put all these different cuts on at the same time? I mean, how are you guys? The tomahawk is actually going to go on the barbecue pit. Okay. Because tomahawk, it's so big, it needs to be a little bit more low and slow. We're going to cook that for 45 minutes okay. at 225 degrees, and we're going to flip it every 10 minutes. Okay. And the rest of these, we're going to put on the gas grill 
because that's quick. I mean, we don't, at the fire station, we don't always have time to cook a big, extravagant meal. The fun thing about steaks at the fire station is steaks are usually reserved for special occasions. So when, when somebody gets promoted, or when somebody has a baby, or when somebody gets married, we always bring in steaks for the guys. Talk to me a little bit about the brotherhood at the fire station. <laughs> they're, they're the family you didn't know you needed. <laughs> or wanted. Or wanted, for that matter. <laughs> um, you know, we, I see my guys just as much, sometimes if not more, than I see my own family. And uh, they, they really are a family. Uh, if I'm ever having a bad day, I just remind myself I'm going to work to, to hang out with my family and hang out with my buddies. We do everything together. We cook together, we clean together. That's how you build that bond. So another pro tip uh, that I always like to remember and just pass on to other people is that when you are cooking beef, um, I like to take it out maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half before you're actually gonna cook it. And that's to let it get to that room temperature because that just ensures easy cooking it raises the temperature more thoroughly through the meat and stuff so you're going to get those beautiful char marks on it while the inner side is remaining you know somewhat constant temp but it just brings to an even temp quicker rather than pulling a cold piece of meat out that's all the way through throw it on it's not going to cook even you're going to get burnt outside raw inside all right let's get these on the grill let's do this yeah. This is our gym at Station 74. This is an impressive gym. Is this your happy place? It is, okay. sometimes. You like to, are you in here, what, once a shift? How does that work for you guys? Well, we try to get in here about an hour a day, hour and a half a day, Okay. so. Do you have the same routine every time you come in? Oh, uh, no, it changes. Okay, Got a so, few different things. Okay, so give me an idea. What? Where would you start? What's like your ideal? 60 minute workout in here. Sure, well, there's a lot of things. We could do leg day, upper body. I noticed you have this assault bike. This is gonna get like your cardio pumping out of control really fast, and why is that important for what you do? Well, it's, it's important for our job. Being firefighters, we have to be in good physical shape. Getting in here hour a day, uh, build up cardiovascular endurance is very important. The assault bike's always good, but I like the stair climber. Uh, I think it applies to the job a whole lot. If you have to go upstairs, it carries over. So there's a lot. We have, of course, the stairs. We have the leg press. The rowing machine? Yeah, yeah. Wow. This is a whole cardio area right here and kind of moves on into legs, I guess. So they kind of laid it out that way. Uh, leg press and leg curl, leg extension. Yeah. So power rack for squats. And I noticed a lot of these machines are pretty versatile. Like you can do a lot of different workouts with one machine. Like this, for example, our cable machine. There's a lot of different things we can do with it. You can set the cables up high, down low. We have the pull-ups up here. Uh, one thing that we can do is use the ropes and use them for curls. Uh, arm strength is important with this job, carrying saws, hose, fire extinguishers. Just curling it works with arm strength, grip strength. And you've got this like full range of motion. You've got every couple of inches, you can adjust it and do just about anything. Yeah, it's great. And what's this wood door around the corner? That right there is our sauna. During fire, smoke contains a lot of carcinogens, bad things that we don't want in our body or on our body. So using the sauna uh, helps us sweat those out and stay healthy. Thank you for showing me around the gym. This is impressive. Of course, absolutely. I Thank really you. appreciate you guys taking the time to make sure that you're at peak of fitness and health so that you're ready at the drop of a hat to help. All right, well, we are gonna get our workout on. Keenan's gonna show me some good workouts. And when we're done, we'll meet you back in the kitchen for more hot eats. Temperature and timing, those okay. are two big things to me. So I'm, I'm very anal when it comes to cooking. I stick to timers Okay. a lot of things. Some yeah. people eyeball, I like, the methodical aspect of just setting a timer that way I know it's evenly cooked instead of you know just setting it and forgetting it kind yeah. of thing. You know? So you're talking temperature of the grill or of the meat? Well of the grill is very important. I cook my steaks at a really hot temperature for very quick right okay. because you want that outside sear yeah. where you get those beautiful grill marks and then you pull it off you let it rest and then you cut into it. I try to get as close to 500 as possible. I know that's really really hot but yeah, it's a trick I learned a long time ago, and one thing you don't want to do is grill up a steak in a firehouse. So we're letting it get to temperature. Uh, we've got all of our meat. I'm gonna go ahead and probably throw three or four of those. The filet will go on last, obviously, because it doesn't have that fat, so it doesn't give you that buffer as far as the cooking goes. Right. But the fat will give you a little leniency. 
Well, we've been talking a lot about summertime and grilling and giving some really good grilling tips. And you guys have some incredible cuts of meat here. Why don't we walk along the case and tell me a little bit about some of your favorites? Absolutely. Here to start, we have all our fresh sausages. The sausages are all made in-house, uh, stuffed inside raw casings. Um, you can't beat them. They're great for the grill for the summertime. We also serve the boudin hot or mild. Those who like a little extra kick, we do a spicy boudin. Next on the list, we have our red meat, our steaks, the creme de la creme here. So all our beef is prime. Um, we have filets, ribeyes, uh, bone-in ribeyes for those who like that bone. New York strips, sirloins. We sell the sirloin flat meat for our fajitas. It's one of a kind. You really can't get it anywhere else. Do you have a tomahawk? <laughs> the, uh, the showstopper. Yeah, I call that the Fred Flintstone steak because it looks like, you know, something that the caveman would be eating. Then we also have bare ribs, um, pork ribs, oh, beef wow. ribs. Um, then also this Wagyu A5 uh, and A7, we get it every once in a while. That's one that uh, most stores don't carry, so we do offer that. Then we really get into our specialty items. Pinwheels, uh, we call them filet bombs, jazzy chicken. We take a chicken thigh, wrap it with bacon after we stuff it with either boudin or dirty rice, armadillo eggs. All this stuff is seasoned stuff. All you gotta do is take it home and cook it. Yeah, the boneless stuffed chickens, this is what we make all these products back there so we can wholesale to all our other uh, customers. Okay. A lot of the big grocery store chains in Texas, H-E-B, Kroger, and you can find these. Yeah, if you're new to grilling, come see us. We can try to help you out to figure out your menu and uh, plan your party as best we can. Halfway through the, the cooking, uh, obviously we just put it on the grill, got that initial heat. So what I'm gonna do is obviously I set a timer for about two minutes on that first side of steak. What I'm gonna do when that timer hits two minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, right? And it's already cooking. Wow. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it, right? So we get the beautiful cross grill mark. Oh, it smells so good. And we're gonna Perfect. close it. You wanna keep the grill closed, that way it just keeps all the temperature in, because the longer, the more you open it, you know, you're just letting all that heat out. By doing this, just giving it like that three, three and a half minutes, it's gonna bring all that temperature up to the core of the meat, and then when we flip it, it's uh, gonna be on there significantly shorter, right? So maybe a minute, minute and a half, uh, because it's already brought the temperature up to a certain point. So we're literally just flipping it, and we're just gonna flash cook it super okay. quick, right? So we're right at that point now where we're gonna go ahead and flip it. It's had about... Oh, look at those marks, I love it. Right, it's nice and beautiful. Oh my gosh, and you're right about the heat because I love those crispy little edges. Yeah. Those are the best. It looks Yum. good crunch on the steak. Yeah, absolutely. As the meat cooks, obviously the protein, uh, the protein sets up. You don't ever wanna cook a steak and then plate it and cut it in the because basically you're going to lose that juice because as that meat cooks, all that juice goes to the center of the meat. So by letting it rest, you're giving that those juices that are now in the center of the meat a chance to redistribute through the rest of the cut of the beef. Wow. So basically letting it rest for 5, 10, 15 minutes, you're going to get a juicier steak than taking it off, cutting it, because then all your juices are going to spill out. So we're going to do asparagus. This is a very, very easy recipe. We got our one bunch of asparagus washed. We're gonna cut the ends off. So we're gonna cook this on the pit. So we're gonna take our foil, we're gonna put our asparagus in the foil. Take our olive oil, and then we're gonna mix it up really good. Don't do too much or it's gonna come out soggy. Minced garlic. A little bit of salt. A bit of pepper. And then the secret ingredient, Shredded Parmesan cheese. Very nice. And just give it a good dusting. Mix it up really good. How'd you figure this recipe out? I learned this recipe. Like most of the recipes, I learned it from somebody else. <laughs> I, did, I did not make this one up. Fold it over, nice and easy. Make a little boat. And then we've got our handle here. So you can just pick it up and it can go right on the barbecue right pit. To the grill. Okay, how long do you cook that for? About 10 minutes. Okay. Hot Eats will be back in one minute. Welcome to Lynn's Table, right here in the heart of Old Town Spring. At Lynn's Table, you'll find breakfast, lunch, and dinner, including a full ice cream parlor and homemade fudge. So make plans to come try some fresh food thoughtfully prepared right here in the heart of Old Town Spring.
This is summer salad. Uh, this is another recipe that was taught to me. This is actually my wife's recipe. Uh, she made it up. So we have cucumber, avocado, feta cheese, and cherry tomatoes, and then this uh, Ken Steakhouse olive oil vinaigrette. Oh, it already sounds refreshing. Just it's, it is salad. very refreshing. So I see you chose to... Always skin it. Yeah. And the reason I skin it is because the cucumbers you get at the grocery store are called waxed cucumbers, and that skin does not taste good. So just a quick, easy way that I like to do it. Just stack them up and very next nice. we're gonna do the avocados. All right, I'm interested to see your technique here because then everybody does it their own way. <laughs> there is no right way to do an avocado because I got buddies buddies in, in the station that uh, they'll see me cut an avocado and say, what are you doing? That's not how you do it. Right. I'll just pop the seed out. Be very careful doing it this way. If you slip, yes. you're gonna cut something. Yeah, once, once the avocados are in, we're gonna add our cherry tomatoes. And just regular cherry tomatoes, not like the super sweet ones? Or you can do kinds that... whatever you like. Okay. Now, would you recommend making this ahead? Because the avocados can get... You would definitely want to make this, this dish ahead. Okay. Um, and by ahead, I mean a couple hours. Okay. So I would actually do this before I put my steaks on. When I pull my steaks out to bring them up to room temperature on the counter, I'll make this. Oh, okay. And then put this in the fridge. So now we're going to take our feta cheese. We're just going to crumble it on top. Now, like I always say, do what you like. So do as much of this or as little of this as you want. I like to get a good layer on top. I'm gonna say do the whole thing. Do the whole thing. Yeah. Well, we can do the whole thing. Next, we're gonna take our olive oil and vinegar. You want the whole bottle? We're gonna do the whole bottle. So that's how your avocado is gonna stay fresh. That's right. All right, very nice. Just mix it up real good. Now you can add some seasoning to this if you want to, some garlic or some salt and pepper. I don't, I let the, uh, I let the dressing do the work. Yeah. We're gonna take this, we're gonna put it in the fridge. So as you're kind of slicing up some pieces, everybody can have a taste test. Tell, tell me a little bit about knife safety. So knife safety, right? A lot of people want to cut with the tip, but what people don't realize is actually the sharpest part of the knife is the butt. And that's where the prim like, primarily the cutting should be done from there to there. And that's, you're just gonna maintain your knife sharpness. A lot of people don't realize like you can cut yourself a lot easier with a dull knife than a sharp knife. Cause yeah. a sharp knife will go like a hot knife through butter, right? But right. a dull one, you're sitting there sawing and if it catches, you know, you may cut your finger, oh. you know, it just, you're setting yourself up for failure. So yeah, a good sharp knife in the kitchen is paramount. And then as far as making the cuts, you're going anything in particular? And you can cut it up any way you want. I'm just cutting it up so everybody can get a slice, sure. you know, little pieces and stuff like that. But this is our ribeye. So this has, out of all the steaks, one of the most, but the highest fat content, marbling, if you will. And that's what was a, we were able to get this beautiful outside crust and that crunch on the outside while still maintaining a very moist inside, right? But yeah, you can see the fibers of the meat. And, right. and obviously this has been sitting since we've been filming for a while. Um, but you should be able to see the fibers. Uh, if you did gray, then you obviously way overcooked. Yeah. You shot over the plate. So in there. Yeah, we all have. You know, and the way to make a great steak is to make a bunch of crappy ones. So <laughs> practice makes perfect. There That's exactly go. it. I and mean, seriously. And that marbling goes into a lot about your your meat quality and how that cow was finished off when he came off the pasture. So because of the fat content in there, that steer. He went to a feedlot and he was fed out before he went to the butcher. Your grass-fed beef isn't going to look like that. It's not going to have that kind of fat content or that marbling inside the meat fibers. Right. As far as comparing a grass-fed steak to a grain-finished steak side-by-side -side, nutritional value-wise, the grass-fed is going to have about two grams higher protein content and the grain-finished steak is going to have about one and a half grams higher carb content. So side-by-side, okay. -side, they're about the same. It's just all about flavor profile and what, what you like. What are you gonna do with that big old tomahawk? Is he ready? Has he rested? I want to see how you do this. I don't even know where to start. Oh, there you go. That's fantastic. Great job. Hot Eats will be back in one minute. This is our scratch kitchen. We make everything from scratch, from all our stuffings that go into our products. So all our beef is prime. We have filets, ribeyes, uh, bone-in ribeyes for those who like that bone, New York strips, 
sirloins. We sell the sirloin flat meat for our fajitas. It's one of a kind, you really can't get it anywhere else. Y'all come to La Boucherie. It is conveniently located right here off of Kirkendall between Luetta and Spring Cypress. You can't miss it. Huge facility and literally anything and everything you can think of. If you have the desire to serve, the courage to act, and the ability to perform, the Spring Fire Department wants you to volunteer with us. Our volunteers are the heart of what we do. The time demands are substantial, but so are the benefits, including training towards firefighter certifications, financial incentives, insurance, and retirement. Learn how to volunteer with us at springfd.org volunteer. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Hot Eats. I can't wait to dig in, and we can't wait to see you on our next episode of Cajun Delights. See you then on the next episode of Hot Eats.